Cool. Yeah, thanks for the first presentation. It was fantastic and uh, kind of laid out all the terms that I needed for this presentation. So hopefully you understood everything and uh, uh, we will do lots of live coding. Something will go wrong for sure, but we'll manage. Uh, so um, I want to talk about building several web apps with the... Uh, hmm? Yeah, yeah, it was turned on before I started talking. Uh, double check, yeah. So uh, we'll talk about building several web apps with Gatsby and Amplify. And um, we'll actually talk about more than, than just that, but yeah, a little bit... Oh, the lag is just... That's real big. Okay, the lag was just like two minutes lag. <laughs> A uh, little bit about myself, so um, my name is Vladimir Novik, I'm an independent consultant, uh, I'm Google developer expert, author, software architect, and I do lots of stuff in web, mobile, VR, AR, IoT, AI. Probably if I add blockchain, I will be on top of buzzwords, but I uh, <laughs> haven't uh, dove into blockchain yet. So I do like uh, consulting, hands-on development, workshops, on-site workshops, like mentoring, stuff like that. So if you feel uh, like you need to ask questions and so on, you can find me on Twitter, you can find my website over there. I have a link to YouTube channel, so I constantly stream stuff on Twitch. Not gaming, but like live coding. And my uh, YouTube channel will the same. Like live coding either myself or with different people from, from industry. Um, and uh, yeah. Uh, so let's wait for the next slide. <laughs> yeah, uh, AirPlay w is way better than, <laughs> than Zoom, but yeah, we'll manage. So, um, Gatsby, we've heard that Gatsby is a static uh, site generator. Uh, which one of you tried Gatsby before? Uh, heard about Gatsby, all of you, because you just had from previous <laughs> lecture, so. Uh, and actually, it's not static site generator. It's more of a framework already. It's uh, based on React and um, give you ability to build blazing fast websites. So why it's not only um, static site generator? Because it has plugin system, it has theming options called theme UI, it has um, bunch of starters, like starter marketplace that you can just go there and download the starter and run your site with different headless CMSs, with different uh, styling options, with, with whatever you like. You basically go to Gatsby site, you search for starter that you want, browse through the starters and uh, the one that you like, you just use it. Or you can actually combine them, use uh, different themes together and so on. We will cover that a little bit later. So, uh, Gatsby is using React, it's using Webpack, and it's using GraphQL. Which one of you heard about GraphQL? Which one of you are using GraphQL? Cool, so I will um, explain about how Gatsby works in a nutshell, and then we will get into what GraphQL is. So, uh, Gatsby basically can get data from different data sources. It can be CMSs, it can be Markdown, it can be any data, any APIs, uh, YAMLs, JSON, CSVs, you name it, file system, whatever you like. Uh, and uh, basically it has a build process. Uh, your build process and development process. Whenever you run Gatsby develop, your site is served through Webpack, you have hot model reloading, you have all the benefits of modern front-end development. But when you run uh, Gatsby build, you have your uh, site built statically. You can deploy everything uh, to the cloud. You can use it uh, either just as like static site or connected to, to uh, more like, dynamic functionality. And uh, you deploy it to different uh, platforms. Um, there are a list of here like Netlify, um, AWS Amplify, GitHub Pages, uh, a bunch of them. So, before getting into bare bones of Gatsby and Amplify, and well, this like Zoom screen share is really slow, but yeah. So, what is GraphQL? And uh, if we look at the trend 
we see, like, and it's ran from like two years ago, right? Two years ago, it was over here. Right now, I didn't want to show that because it's one vertical line going up. Because like everyone is starting using uh, GraphQL, it's um, common everywhere, and uh, more, more companies are switching to GraphQL. Now, why is that, and what is GraphQL? So GraphQL is a query language for your API, as said on the official website. But uh, in reality, it's kind of slow gif of, yeah, of magic. <laughs> Basically, it's magic. Um, yeah, but jokes aside, uh, why GraphQL, right? Why God's be using GraphQL? Why God, GraphQL is so popular? And what's wrong with REST APIs, right? So REST APIs, uh, and when I'm talking about REST, I'm, talking on this, I'm not talking about this kind of REST. Uh, I'm talking about actually REST APIs, right? Um, when the idea, the core idea, is uh, to have URL for every resource. Idea is fine, right? We're using it all the time, but there are some problems that I introduced. And uh, problems, I need constantly to switch, <laughs> like to see that I'm, uh, yeah. So description of resources coupled, coupled to implementation in most cases. Let's uh, look at the example. Let's say we have a block CMS, right? We have a bunch of posts, we have a bunch of users. Typically, we'll have uh, um, API route slash posts with IDs or just slash posts giving us all the data with all the like title content and maybe author IDs. Now, whenever I get this data, I will probably need to query each for each user ID. I will need to query separate API the slash users. And then what I'm getting into the problem of tons and tons of requests, consolidating them on the client, and so on. So um, sometimes people do, OK, I need for this page, I just need posts and, and the user. So in one API request, I will, uh, in one response, I will return both the post and all the data for the user. Right? So these two cases are basically overfetching and underfetching. Underfetching is when I get only the ID of the users, not enough data to show on the site, so I need to chain this request. And overfetching is when I just pour too much, too much data on, uh, on the page, um, and then I need to uh, consolidate that, or maybe if I'm using it on the web, that's fine, but on the mobile, this amount of data will eat traffic and so on. And uh, chain request to the server, this is kind of a typical thing. So the best, uh, I'm also like going into Star Wars universe, the, the best example of the worst API is the Star Wars like this one because of the structure of it. And uh, let's take a look at how it looks like. So for endpoint with people, I will get a bunch of uh, like name, height, mass, hair color, skin color, and so on. And I will have an array of fields, and each one of them is another endpoint. And I mean, come on, how, why you structure API with like that? But um, this kind of shows you how like bad structured API can look like. If I need to retrieve data for planets, for all population on the planet, and species, and so on, I can get to like 100 of requests pretty easily. So it's out of date. Mm, yeah. So the it's already nice. Yeah, yeah, it's out of date because no one maintains <laughs> this shit. So. <laughs> uh, probably like the one that you created is the most updated one because it has the it's manual. <laughs> yeah. The best thing you do, you do manually, right? Uh, so, uh, so how does GraphQL solve all these problems? And um, Basically, uh, in GraphQL, we avoid overfetching. We uh, prevent multiple API calls. We have less communication with API developers, and everything is self documented. What do I mean by all of this? Basically, we have only one endpoint. And we have specific query language. We have specific structure of request. We send this query language. 
and we can retrieve all the data that we need. And the most important part, as a front-end developer, uh, developing my web app or mobile app, the, um, the data that I define, the structure of the data, the shape of the data, will be the exact same shape of data that will be returned. So no fields with undefined nulls, uh, arrays with uh, weird stuff, and, and so on. And this is done because uh, GraphQL is type-based. So you define the schema, you define types on the server. And if it doesn't comply to the type, it will simply fail. The request will fail, and uh, it will return a uh, logical error of why it happened. So how GraphQL looks like? Something like this. If I want to retrieve all films with title, I get the exact same shape of data. So I want all films, films and title, I get all films, films, and title. There's no way uh, my films will return now. It will definitely return an array. It can be empty, but it will be definitely an array, right? And it will, will be, all films will be there, and films will be there, and title will be there if there is some data in this array, and so on. Now, in reality, GraphQL uh, looks a little bit more complicated than this simple query. Uh, something like that. So when you have uh, fragments, which is uh, a keyboard, uh, like a word for like reusable blocks, basically, you have your uh, <laughs> you have um, uh, queries with variables that you can pass. You have different directives that we will see in a bit uh, when we use amplify. And here I get all the planets. I get the rotation period, residence. Name, species, classification, language, vehicles, and in which films this vehicle appeared. I'm talking about 100 plus, if not more, requests to just simple REST API. Here I'm doing this in one request, I get all the data back. Now, why I'm doing this like introduction of GraphQL? And, uh, because Gatsby uses that as the system to retrieve any data from anywhere, either file system or from APIs, CMSs, and, uh, and whatever you want. Uh, this is just a simple uh, like overview how regular GET requests look like, um, regular POST requests. I won't uh, show that, but oh, come on. Yeah. So this is how the uh, GraphQL uh, request basically looks like. So you, in the body, when you send the request to API endpoint, you send specific stringified query. So stringified format of this query language. And the result, you get the same shape of data. Now on the server, On the server, you will see something like this. There will be typed, uh, types defined with different fields. Uh, and you can see it's, uh, it looks different. It looks kind of close to TypeScript, right? But it's not. So it's like specific schema definition language. Uh, so you def we define post, we define a person. And you can see here. Uh, post will be array of type post, meaning if I will try to insert in this array something that doesn't have title, content, and user, it will fail. It won't let me to do this on the like schema definition language. So even before it goes into uh, like trying to insert something into database and so on, so it will fail on on that step. Uh, and GraphQL schema definition, uh, schema definition language can be, you can also do like uh, graph types of connections. So you can connect user to, uh, like online users to users to do's, which will connect to users. You will have like cyc uh, cyclic uh, things. Uh, also, there is a concept of resolvers. Uh, every type is basically resolved by function, just simple function. This function can do anything can resolve data from local variable, from data source, from API, from whatever. So in that sense, um, there is a saying like graph, uh, GraphQL is a query language for API. I think this statement is fundamentally wrong because lots of people start 
working with the GraphQL, they're like, ah, okay, I need to have my API, and then the GraphQL is sort of a proxy, which is not. GraphQL is a spec. Uh, basically, however you implement your resolvers is up to you, as soon as you resolve these types there. So it was kind of overview what GraphQL is, and uh, now we'll talk about Gatsby and like why Gatsby uses that, how it uses that, and uh, hopefully after this like short explanation of GraphQL, whenever you see GraphQL, yeah. Uh, just the one question. Yeah. The, yeah. yeah. Is, do you need to do something different in your APIs to be supported by GraphQL, or do you just need to use it as the yes. to be deployed? Because you said that you can get. You define your server in uh, in a uh, different way. So your server will be defined, uh, on your server you define your schema as types, you define functions as uh, like returning instances of these types and so on. So it's like totally different implementation. So it's not like I can take the Star Wars API and just query it with GraphQL. You need to as do something in the API too. You can do it as like intermediate step. So basically a resolver is a function that returns something. You can simply call API endpoint and return something back, but you will uh, easily get into performance issues because you have lots of types, you have n plus one problem, which means if you want to execute, um, like if you want to execute a query and you have n uh, amount of types in this query, for every uh, type there will be a resolver that will be run. There will be n plus one. Uh, potential like SQL statements or like queries to database which will result in performance issues. In, in the case of REST API, it will be the same like chaining requests and lots of requests and so on. So as, as an intermediate step of migration of existing REST API to GraphQL, it's possible for a limited amount of time. But then you obviously need to migrate the whole implementation of your API to uh, the for third party, I will show a service that wraps lots of, uh, like pretty much most of APIs that you will need and uh, will give you, you, you like GraphQL uh, uh, endpoint for that. It's called OneGraph, the service. I have another question. Yeah. So, uh, is GraphQL dependent on the dependencies or is it dependent on the dependencies? No. GraphQL is a spec. So, basically, what it means, if you want to implement that on your node server, let's say, you will implement, um, you will define types, then you will, def like you will define a schema, you will define the resolvers as the functions. Now, it's up to you where you want to query data from. You want to get it from Mongo, you can. You can get it from API, you can. So the resolver uses a... Uh... Resolver is just a function, regular JavaScript function. What the resolver will return, the data has to comply to the contract defined in the schema. So if I had a post, and if I have a resolver for posts, my resolver function, doesn't matter how it queries the data, it has to return title content and user. There's no way around that. But it's up to you how to implement that. There are like different uh, solutions how to like, optimize that. And uh, like GraphQL is, is as itself is a huge topic. Um, like I mentioned like my website and so on. So on my YouTube channel, I have like 10 hours uh, Bootcamp on GraphQL, like and like all frameworks and on the server, so uh, it's like free and, and like open source, so you're know, free uh, to check uh, check it out. Uh, so let, let's talk about Gatsby for a second. So for um, in order to install Gatsby, I uh, first of all install Gatsby CLI, and then I generate a new site. Uh, now. And I have another slide the same. So I have legs also. I have third slide, which is the same. Nice. I have legs not only in Zoom, but on my computer as well. So um, basically, if you want to generate a new site, you run Gatsby new site directory name, and then the URL of starter GitHub repo. You can omit this for, for the start. You can just run it. Gatsby new dot will generate will, uh, will generate site in the same place where you are, uh, but you can pass different starter URLs which will include additional functionality on top of uh, basic Gatsby blog uh, uh, like starter that is like default one. Uh, whenever you run that, you will get different like 
you get a folder structure with this, like specific folder structure. Basically, you will have a source directory, pages inside source directory. Now, this is important part. Uh, pages directory, every React component you put inside will be a separate page. When you build the site, it will be separate HTML, which will be served statically. Uh, and um, in addition to that, there is like programmatic API when you can create these uh, pages on the fly. We'll see it later. But uh, basically, like every component there will be a separate page. Uh, there are a bunch of files, Gatsby node, Gatsby browser, SSR, and config. So uh, we talked about server, like in previous presentation, the, um, you talked about server-side rendering, right? And how we differentiate between server-side rendering and client-side rendering. Now Gatsby, when the site is built, it goes through through the process of generating all the markup on the server and then populating this markup on the client. So Gatsby browser, everything that will be run on the cli client will be run inside Gatsby browser. Now, Gatsby SSR, some, uh, this is something that will be run in the, on the stage of uh, server-side rendering. Meaning, whenever I build my site, before everything is served to the client, Gatsby SSR will run. And there is Gatsby node, which is a pretty powerful one. In Gatsby node, you can use different node API, such as create pages and so on, to uh, create pages from, uh, like, programmatically create pages. Instead of just dropping component side pages folder, you can run this function and, and create that. And we will create, uh, I don't know, I don't know how we'll manage with this line, but we'll see. Uh, we will create uh, programmatically pages from markdown files that we'll have in file system. Gatsby config is something you will use, I think, more often than even source pages. <laughs> so Gatsby, uh, config is the place where you put your plugins. And Gatsby is, uh, has a huge ecosystem of plugins. And it has really, really nice API to develop these plugins. So uh, in Gatsby config, you put all this stuff. For styling, for styling, yeah, thanks. <laughs> for styling, you can just import styles traditionally, CSS. You can run it through post-CSS. You can run it through, through SAS or whatever you use. And just import in Gatsby browser. So whenever your site will be served, everything will be imported. You also can do what you can do. You can create component.module.css file next to every component, and you will get scope.css.css modules. But the kind of go-to solution, and you will see it in lots of themes and starters, is CSS and JS. And uh, like my personal favorite is Emotion. And uh, there is like style components, uh, which is also another popular one. And uh, Gatsby created a kind of wrapper over Emotions called Theme UI. And uh, what what it does basically gives you all the primitives that Emotion has but it get, give you theming options. So you can easily switch a theme from dark to light to like blue, red, whatever. And uh, yeah, check this out. It's uh, out of scope of this uh, talk, but it's something, um, something really nice. So for data, uh, for data, let's, can you see it or should, should I zoom? Should, I should zoom probably, right? So let's look at that. So here, let's first of all look at this part. So I have an index page. In my index page, I have layout component. Which one of you used Gatsby like a year ago? So a year ago, there was a, was a concept of, of layouts. They were kind of different. There was like a different export of these uh, layouts. Now it's not such a thing. Layout is just component, just regular component. Um, for styling purposes, typically you'll put the header and footer inside and the content will render in between. Uh, but it, it's up to you. Every page can have different components. Um, and here, in my index page, I export it as default and I have the data pro. Now here, I have this query. So I use GraphQL from Gatsby and I have this GraphQL syntax. 
Now, what it does, first of all, what, what is query does? This query uh, queries the site, site metadata and title. Now, you can ask, okay, where this data comes from? Now, this specific data comes from Gatsby config. Gatsby config, you define site metadata, you can define title, you can define keywords, uh, and it's really convenient to define all this stuff in one place, and then whenever you need to use that, you use it uh, in that way. Now, whenever you export const uh, uh, query here, it will be automatically injected as a prop inside the index page. That's what Gatsby does under the hood. So it's important to remember, you export the query, and then you can use as data here, and uh, data will be inside. Now, this thing works. Uh, now, it looks like it's dynamic content, but it's not. What happens here, whenever I build the site, the data is pulled in the build time. And when site is served, there is no such thing as putting data inside and so on. Like on, on the client, whenever the page is on the client, there is just a markup inside with all the data populated because that's what is done in the, in the build time. We will see differentiation between static, uh, con uh, populating static content and uh, dynamic content. They're quite different. Uh, so, yeah, I told you it's in just result as data prop inside the page. And there is another option to get data through like Gatsby um, tools of uh, getting GraphQL inside the, the component. And it's called static query. And uh, you've seen the, when I when I explained GraphQL, I showed you variables. There was like these things with dollar, right? Uh, basically, to every GraphQL query, you can pass variables. Uh, static query, it's static because it cannot accept variables. But there is a, a really good use case for static queries. Now, the, the queries that I showed before can be run only on page level. So every component that sits under source pages can have export the query, and, and that's it. Now, obviously, I will have components with, uh, that need to query data, right? So for that, I will use static query, and I will use static query hook. So it's called use static query, and I pass here my query inside, the same. The difference here, this is done in layout component. So if I will run that in a similar way as I did that with the page, it won't work because it's not on the page level. Plugins. So plugins look like this. And remember this site metadata? So inside Gatsby config, I have title, and description, and author, and all of these uh, can be queried by Gatsby uh, through GraphQL and so on. Here I have a bunch of plugins which are automatically um, installed whenever I install uh, Gatsby new site. A bunch of options, I won't, won't go through its options, but this is, for example, Helmet, puts like all the like, uh, title and uh, all the meta tags and so on. Transform and Sharp is for optimization, images optimization. So whenever you load an image, instead of showing loading icon and so on, you will see like pixelated image that will slowly like fade in into a proper quality image. Um, plugin manifest will create manifest. Uh, there are tons of plugins. Uh, we'll use some of them. Uh, so. Time for the demo, which is will be like me typing and then sitting waiting. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. Uh, okay. So what we'll do? <laughs> we'll wait for my terminal to show up. Um, okay. Uh, let's uh, create a new site. Uh, let's call it. <laughs> Lagging web coding. Uh, and it will be um, 
what it does, it takes the Gatsby starter default, this is the default starter, and it clones inside the, the repo, installs a bunch of stuff. And uh, while it does that, I wonder if for this slide will be easier to just show you the... It's actually, right now it's faster. Yeah, so before, like, before I finish, let me explain you something. Like with these, all these starters and themes and so on, there is a really cool concept in Gatsby. Like when, when you look through all these starters, look through the themes, you usually you look at like one theme and this is nice and this is nice and you want to combine them. Now Gatsby had this concept of shadowing, which is a really, really cool and powerful uh, thing. Whenever you install this kind of starter, or if you install theme, and if you want to override existing component that is somewhere in node models, and somewhere sits there, to override that, you just need to create a directory with the same name of the theme, with the same structure inside. So let's say you had header component from like Novella theme, then you will create, uh, let's say, uh, folder source. Uh, narrative novella theme, source, components, header, like following the same structure as it defines, uh, defined in node models and define your component will be automatically overridden. Uh, but yeah, probably easier to just show it. Uh, okay, so is it just, oh, okay. yeah, it came back. Cool, so it's it finished. Let's run Gatsby develop. Uh, ah, yeah, I need to be inside logging, like in live coding. And run develop. So basically what it will do, it will sell the file using like hot model, reload, and, and so on. And let me just also open the code and walk you through the uh, through the folder structure. Uh, live coding, uh, this one. If the font is too uh, small, let me know. So basically, what I have here, oh, it's it's faster right now. But probably the leg was in the, more in the presentation. So we have this index page, and we have this page two component. Now, if I run my site, I can go to localhost eighty eighty. So if I go to page two, I will have page two, go back to home page, and so on. Now, if you will try to uh, check this site in Lighthouse on performance and so on, it will be awful because this is development environment. Um, production environment will be just static site without any like model uh, hot model reloading and so on. Here, I basically. Uh, Just close my email. I don't have a reason to. Uh, where is the base code? You just open them side by side. So I'm on the page two. And uh, let's say, welcome to page. And you can see it's reloaded here. So I can just use my regular development workflow and see stuff work. 
Now, if I go inside Gatsby config, I can see site metadata here. So I can change it, maybe something like this. You can see it re it's reflected automatically. And if I look where this data comes from, it comes from the layout component with the same use static query that I showed you previously in the slides. So basically, whatever I showed you in the slide is something that already there in starter default. All like, if you don't know, like, or don't remember later on how to use static queries or how to use just regular query, you can look through the starter default. It has these uh, demos there. So. Uh, what was the task? So we uh, installed the, the file system. Uh, well, we, we installed the Gatsby, uh, installed Gatsby. What I want to install now is to install Gatsby source file system. Because I want to get my markdown files be as a content, right? I, I want to have content folder with a bunch of markdown files and I want to query them using GraphQL and use them as sort of CMS. Um, yeah. So, let's do it here. I will install the file system and meanwhile I will configure things here and let me explain what happens. Now this is Gatsby config, right? I can resolve different plugins. This plugin says look at the file system and uh, define basically uh, the name post and define that all the posts will be under my content here. Content folder. Now what I can do now, I can start, uh, I don't have any database, I don't have anything, I have just my file system, right? So I can define content and I can say, okay, it will be post one what md, that will be my markdown file. Now inside I will have, uh, let me just copy that for the sake of example. Uh, Inside my post, I will just have a front matter with different metadata of my post, the path, the date, and the title. And as you can imagine, this one, uh, this path, I want to be in the URL, right? So remember, I told you every component that I put inside pages will be a page, right? Here I have dynamic content in a way. Uh, I have. Um, Bunch of posts I cannot create every time new component for, for every page. So I need to do this programmatically. And to do it programmatically, and obviously there is way more to that, is just an overview of uh, uh, like surface of Gatsby. There is like way deeper um, things to explain. Uh, but let's. Let me actually copy the snippet because it will be faster. I want to get it into Amplify as well. Uh, so I have this Gatsby node. Inside my Gatsby node, I will run a bunch of weird code. Now it's here, I will use API called Create Pages. Now if you go to Gatsby Docs, you will see a bunch of APIs available for node, available for browser, available for server side rendering. Uh, this is one of these APIs, and it says create pages programmatically, use some kind of template for this page, and the result, uh, get the, the front matter, and uh, basically send the result to the template. Now, I won't dive into that, and just like uh, overview how it looks like. But right now, let me just also copy the template folder here and show you the new created blog from the content. Here I will have 
uh, front matter, HTML, and so on. So the, the most important uh, thing to understand here is that all the data is queried using GraphQL. Everything is done statically right now. And whenever I build a site, everything will be deployed, will be in the cloud, and on top of that, I can add dynamic functionality later on. Now, also, I need to install here. Uh, let's see if it uh, if it works actually. Just save the first more than five. Hmm? I haven't saved it. Oh, uh, let's see. Okay, I haven't installed another uh, another package. It's called Gatsby Transformer Remark, and this uh, another plugin. Sorry, and this plugin basically transforms all my Markdown files to be available inside uh, available for Gatsby. And then install Gatsby Transformer Remark. And I will start just copying the snippets here. Uh, well, so, yeah. <coughs> and go to the side of Gatsby config. Uh, let's get the, we'll get the file system and we are getting the, this plugin. Installed yet, probably. So what I want to have here uh, in my uh, in my site, whenever I go to blog slash blog slash my first post, I will be able to see some kind of content, right? That's what I'm looking for. Uh, and it's still building, I think. Uh, no. um, okay, let's see. Now, God's becomes, uh, maybe I need to restart my site. Because, yeah, because I need to create things programmatically and so on. Uh, <coughs> I told you something will go wrong. <laughs> No, no, it's because uh, it's in. It's supposed to be there. It's supposed to be. Uh, so it was inside the object of uh, <coughs> Gatsby source file system resolution. Oh come on, what's happening here? No, my DS code also. Let's see. Okay, uh, things work. Uh, let's go to blog. It was my first post, right? And I have my first blog post, which was created uh, programmatically from my front matter and so on. So this is how uh, can be done from like markdown, right? Now. Let's say I don't know how to write these GraphQL queries to get all this markdown. Like I don't know like what is exposed and so on uh, and so on. What I can do is to go to this URL and get an explorer here and graphical ID where I can query everything before I even start coding. I can do a query. Let's say I want to get all files. And I want to get, let's say, absolute path of all files. I will get the icon, an astronaut, and the post. Every file that is uh, like Gatsby source file system basically exposes this all file query and uh, all directory as well. 
and I can query, I can get everything that I want. And um, we talked about all markdown, right? So all markdown remark, I want to get edges, node, and let's say I want to get uh, front matter, title of the post, and obviously I will get my first blog post. So this is a simple demo for that. Now let's talk about AWS Amplify. So we have this um, site, right? It's uh, working, has lots of uh, uh, abilities to add different plugins, different, uh, you can add different uh, themes, use different styling options, but how do I deploy that? So we've seen solution with Netlify, but what if I want to add auth? What if I want to add API? What if I want to add GraphQL API? I want to add, let's say I want to add AI uh, as well, and uh, Maybe analytics and uh, maybe um, VR. Everything with the comfort of my CLI. So I can do that with AWS Amplify. Now, what is Amplify? Is a framework, is a bunch of services and developer tools. Now, um, basically, it's like AWS product, right? So what it gives you, it gives you CLI that uh, you configure locally. It has admin privileges, and then you can simply, whenever you, let's say, want to add uh, authentication, you type amplify add auth, will automatically set up cognito user pools, will automatically set up all the authentication that you want, and you can use the framework part of it on React side or Vue side or uh, Angular side. You can uh, use like higher components for, let's say, the whole logging flow. And that's what we actually will do now. We will add logging to our site. Well, actually, before logging, let's do some, uh, yeah, let's do some continuous integration thing. So we want to add our site to the GitHub. Probably we'll want this repository later on to look through the code as well. So. I will create a new repository, call it uh, dev meetup. Let's create this one. Actually, I have. I think the CI CD will pass on CI CD. I will show you in the different example. Um, I will show you like authentication instead and setting API and so on. So uh, to start with Amplify, and I think I have it in the slides as well. This is a bunch of text which I already told you. It's like a command line interface, unified tool chain. In order to start with Amplify, you install it globally. Install at AWS Amplify CLI and you call configure and init inside your folder. Now that's what we will do. I already installed it. Uh, I already configured that, but let me configure a different user. So I will click, uh, I will type Amplify Configure. It will open up my browser with um, AWS login. Oh, I am already logged in, so it will just redirect me to the console. Or not, not, I was <laughs> logged out. So now I'm logged out, I can back, uh, I'm logged in, I can get back to the console, to the terminal, so get back to the terminal, click enter to continue, I use, I check the, I choose the region that I want to use, I want um, different username, like a new username, Let, okay, amplify, you add something, it's fine with me. What it will do, 
it will redirect me to the console, defining a new IAM user with a bunch of permissions, a bunch of policies, and with administrator access. Now, this, uh, like all the credentials that will be stored lo locally, they automatically add it to git ignore. So whenever I push this to the repo, it won't be pushed. Um, obviously, it will be secure. Um, so I click next, 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 basically. I create the user. And I will delete this user later on. <laughs> It happened to me once when, yeah, uh, it was just in the repo, and then, yeah, I got built. Uh, OK, so I have the uh, access uh, key here and the secret. Uh, so whenever I click on Enter, it asks me for access key. I copy that. Uh, put my access key and I need to put my secret key as well. Now it will ask for my profile name. Let's name it test. And I have a new user. So right now it's configured. Now what I want to do is to init amplify inside my folder. What it will do, it will create a bunch of um, uh, folders, files, and so on. Uh, the name for the project will be uh, login live coding. Name for the environment will be dev. And I can even choose my editor. So whenever CLI will ask me, do you want to edit some file, it will open the, my editor of choice. Now, I want to use JavaScript, and I am using React. My source directory path is source. My distribution is public. In Gatsby, my distribution, all the um, build files will be put inside public directory. Build command will be npm run script build, and start command will be npm run script start. It uses the default, default uh, cloud formation, and I want also to use my user I just created. Now, what it will do, it will define all the uh, like resources needed, it will create all the folders, and so on. Now, after this step is finished, I will be able to uh, simply generate uh, things from the comfort of my CLI. So I will be able to do amplify add auth and add the whole authentication flow. Now you can see that it creates deployment buckets, an auth role, and like bunch of stuff on uh, AWS. Now let's say you experimenting with that, and it creates lots of resources, and obviously you don't want to get built with the, like a huge bill of all the resources you, you tried. Um, Amplify also has um, cleanup commands that will basically read all the configuration files and delete all the resources from the AWS that you don't need. So it's kind of convenient. Um, OK, now if I run Amplify status, nothing is, I don't have any resources, no operations, no providers, and so on. And yeah, the delay is giving me a uh, anyway, let's take a look at the code. And we'll see what was added. Here I have the Amplify folder. And inside this folder I have a bunch of configurations for dev environment, for uh, local, I have also backend here with the uh, AWS Cloud Formation with different role names. Like everything I define through the console or through the CLI will be here in configuration file. So in that sense, if you know, someone else wants to pull all of that, 
uh, it will be possible, except uh, the credentials themselves, like API keys, they uh, need to be like, shared securely or find an environment variables and so on. Uh, so what we will do now, we will add both. And now I want to add just default configuration. I want my authentication, the username to be my email, and I don't want to have any advanced settings. Let's configure the computer. Already. Yeah, yeah. So now, uh, if I do amplify status, I will see that I have here authentication, Res this is the resource and uh, it will basically create the resource. Now what I need to do is type amplify push. Now I skipped through CI CD process but basically in the same way that uh, Netlify was connected to GitHub, in the same way AWS uh, Amplify is connected to GitHub and will deploy whenever there is a push to the branch and, and so on. So right now I want to... It will update resources. Meanwhile, while it updates resources, I want to install some client libraries. I want to install AWS Amplify and AWS Amplify React libraries and I want to configure my, uh, my Amplify inside my app. Now to do so, I go to Gatsby browser. Remember we talked about the browser, something done only on the client side. I don't want to configure like any authentication on the server side. Uh, so I will go to the browser here. And I will actually I will copy a snippet. Master. I will import amplify config and amplify configure. And uh, we haven't talked about this file here, AWS Expos. Now this file was created whenever I set AWS uh, like amplify in it. And here I have just my region, but whenever I push all my authentication, I will also have a bunch of additional stuff inside, such as, uh, well, yeah, uh, yeah such, such as API key and, and so on. Let's see. Okay, I have errors here. Let's see what's, uh, I told you something will, will go wrong. Let's see. That was weird. Let's try again. <coughs> Amplify push. Meanwhile, let me open slides and show you. All the like, connectivity that I've done. Uh, basically, to connect to our app, we use Amplify, we uh, bring config, uh, config from AWS export, and we call Amplify configure, pass the config there. Then, oh, come on. okay. So, this is basically the website of AWS Amplify, and services that can be used with the comfort of simple CLI, just adding several functions, adding uh, like API, adding lots of stuff. These are all co uh, categories that can be used, like analytics, interactions, PubSub, API, and the rest of GraphQL, authentication, uh, which we're trying to push right now. 
notification storage. Uh, XR, uh, Amazon has this service called uh, Amazon Sumerian, which is basically like VR XR uh, platform for uh, creating web-based uh, VR content. Cache, Hub, uh, translations, logging, service workers, um, and so on. Accessibility? Hmm? Accessibility? Accessibility somewhere as well. Uh, and uh, Amplify is probably the most uh, service that is most worked on right now. Like uh, there was huge effort in the last year. There were lots of lots of services were added, and AWS Mobile started with Amplify as just like solution for mobile development because uh, it's kind of more. Uh, trying to mimic fast lane and this kind of uh, like behavior from CLI and then uh, they understood that this is like something for front-end developers as well and then it just uh, exploded. Uh, so let's see if it finished. Oh, come on. This is funny. Like uh, two minutes afterwards, I t like I look at the screen and the slide, and it's still there. Uh, okay. So uh, we get the configuration. So to uh, false indication, we added uh, like add auth. We will see if it will work. If it not, I will show you the different project that I have here. Um, we can use auth class from AWS Amplify to do uh, all uh, to do all sign-in, sign up and so on. We can use like pre-configured components. And basically that's how you do it. Amplify at auth. We install these libraries. We uh, can use with authenticator component. And whenever we'll wrap our page, uh, it looks like it will work. Ah, no. Okay, whatever. Let me just open a different project and show you. Uh, especially we don't have much time, so let me show you the code for different uh, other services. Let me first of all run it. This page. Okay, yeah, this is a different project. Now I want to go to page two, and what I will get, I will get something like this. Uh, now, just a second, let me delete a bunch of this stuff. Okay, so let's look at the code. It's it's not that uh, different from what what you've seen. If we go here, so we we've seen this. The, this is the configuration. Then we have the same post template, uh, no changes there. Now page two uses this component with authenticator from AWS Amplify React. And it wraps the second page with, uh, with authenticator component. What it does, whenever I click on the page, it presents the whole component for um, creating my username, let's say, um, already 
have this one. Uh, and uh, we'll be something like this. Create an account. Now what it will do, it will send me an email with confirmation code that I need to confirm. This part is the part of the host? The AWS. Yeah. Like whenever you use a Bluetooth indicator component, the whole component is that. It's just like from uh, AWS Amplify and everything is customizable. So you can customize every, uh, customize every tiny bit of this component and, and just use it. Okay, so here is my verification code. Six two seven three two six. Now this is my username. And I sign in. And I'm on the second page. Now here we have a bunch of stuff. Let's look at this bunch of stuff. Uh, now here in this example, I also have uh, GraphQL API. So whenever you use Amplify Add API, you can use AWS AppSync, which is another service that gives you an ability to create a GraphQL API uh, and connect it to DynamoDB, Lambda functions, um, like anything basically. Uh, now here inside, what I what I do, I have this list to do query that comes from AWS AppSync and populates uh, populates my, my components. Now in addition to that, there is another example here with subscriptions. So I have kind of dynamic content with the real-time updates and real-time uh, subscriptions. Let's, let's look how it looks like in the real life and then I think we are out of time. So I will wrap up. So what I want to open here is AWS AppSync, another service. In order to add that, we will do AW, um, Amplify Add API, then we'll choose GraphQL, choose the last uh, different steps that we want to go, go like with defaults, and that's what we'll get. Inside, I want to run query here. And what I want to do, and I open them because I want to show you the subscriptions working. It will basically just console log. I want to do, I want to create to do with name to do description last to do. Uh, I don't need an ID and I need to and I need to return uh, description name. An ID. Let's run that, and you see description uh, subscription filed on creative to do. I got this data uh, like dynamically update, uh, updated and so on. So uh, to wrap up uh, and just go through the remainder of my slides. Uh, yeah, I hope like. I thought it will be faster, but because of the lag, uh, yeah. So uh, for REST APIs, we can use um, Amazon Lambda plus API Gateway. We can create new Lambda functions. We can scaffold basic Lambda code, uh, configure API Gateway, interact with Lambda functions with client library. Uh, we can import API from Amplify and then just do Amplify get with endpoint that we configure through the CLI as well. We can use AppSync uh, by, by basically also um, saying Amplify add API and specifying the graph GraphQL. 
can configure it, we can perform queries. We can use hosting as well. We have a bunch of components, such as with Authenticator, we have photo upload component that will automatically upload to S3. Or we can use Amplify a framework like client library to automatically upload to S3, um, return the, the file name, and so on. Uh, we can conf uh, configure CloudFront as well. Uh, and this is done basically by simply amplify add storage and you just do storage.put the file name and the file and everything will be uploaded to S3. Uh, you can add analytics with Amazon Pinpoint so you can record events. Uh, it automatically records sessions and authentication data. As simple as just saying amplify add analytics, amplify push all the resources and then uh, whenever you want to record an event, you can say analytics is recalled and the name of the event, everything will be in inside pinpoint. And demo of scene. For dynamic content, uh, you either can use subscriptions, you can use just on component in mount, you can uh, or use effect hook, you can use just regular API call and get the data. Uh, if you want to get the data whenever you, like on the server rendering side, you use Gatsby SSR for that. If you want to uh, get data programmatically, you can use Gatsby node for that. Um, you can use also like this one, either a small AppSync SDK. Uh, it has uh, more compatibility, looks like Apollo client and so on. And that's all. Uh, <laughs> 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 yeah.